Hey guys, what is up? It is the Fast Break Report here bringing you guys another vlog. So I want to talk about a story that's been pretty big over the past week um, that I've kind of refrained from talking about, uh, mostly because I like to gamble. Uh, you know, I, I I do the, the fan duel bullshit um, about maybe once a week on basketball games. So, you know... I, I, I really, I don't know, like, I, where I stand on betting are two totally, like, different things compared to, like, what Pete Rose did and what John Tay Porter did, but I do want to talk about it because I, I think it's something that will probably never be done again in the NBA. Well, actually, I can't say that. There will be somebody who's dumb enough to do it again in the NBA, but I didn't expect it to be Michael Porter Jr.'s brother who decided he was going to do this. So, apparently, in case you don't know... Um, there was a lot of, um, sports book bets going on about a week or two prior to this, or like, a, a for, for Jonte Porter, where people were just kind of like betting insane amounts of money for him to like take the under on his numbers. And I'm going to be honest, this really hurts the integrity of the sport. Like the, the way that he did this is really bad. Um, you know, at least with Pete Rose, Pete Rose was betting on himself to beat the numbers that were out there. This guy was betting under. <laughs> so, like, he was going out there and purposely playing like shit to win maybe 40 grand. Um, and when you're in the NBA and you're a two-way player, I'm pretty positive even the two-way contracts are worth more than 40 grand, okay? But it's just the idea... Every team in the NBA has, and I didn't know this actually. I actually I saw it on Kenny for uh, Kenny for Reels uh, podcast or whatever they were on uh, the e NBA on ESPN channel. And I didn't know this until Kenny for Real actually said it. Or Kenny Beecham was that every single team in the NBA has a team of dedicated people that track sports book activity. Right? They track the bets going on with all the members on their teams. And John Tay Porter threw up a red flag, okay? And there was even, like, video evidence of him going around where, like, his he was squinting his eyes on threes, like, trying not to make them and stuff like that. This hurts the integrity of the game, okay? And I'm kind of shocked this happened in the NBA after what happened to Calvin Ridley as an Atlanta Falcons fan myself, okay? I was very upset. When Calvin Ridley did this. Now, granted, Calvin Ridley was a star wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons. He's a damn good wide receiver still in the uh, the NFL. But when it happened, I was like, bro, like with the amount of money you're making or the amount of money you're about to make, like this just simply doesn't make sense. And you would think with the amount of money NBA players get paid, there wouldn't be any incentive to want to gamble, right? Like if you're, especially if you're a star player, in the NBA or any league for that matter, you know, the amount of money you make trumps the amount of money you're probably ever going to make gambling on yourself. Um, but John Tay Porter was like, you know, I could go out there, just play like shit and maybe pocket 40 grand. But the thing is, sports books like FanDuel, DraftKings, um, even the NBA itself, they all have professionals working on this stuff to track stuff like this. You know, even if you think you're going to set up a fake account, right, like, like what Calvin Ridley did, if you think you're going to set up a fake account and then, you know, bet uh, on either other teams, like as long as your address is, is, you know, what it is or, you know, you verify the state that you live in or what your name is, um, you know, sometimes you even have to enter your social security number for tax purposes. Um, like they're going to find out, <laughs> like, I don't know who needs to hear this, but if you play in a professional sports league and you gamble on yourself or gamble at all in sports books, they're going to find out. I mean, even Sh Shohei Otani isn't immune to this. Okay. His, his, uh, translator just got popped for, for placing bets under him. You know what I'm saying? So it just goes to show this stuff is very good. Whatever system they have in place for sports, professional sports, the MLB, the NFL, the NBA, the NHL, et cetera, et cetera, whatever system they have in place works incredibly fucking well. <laughs> okay. So I could understand if you're John Tay Porter, you know, maybe you're not a star player and you're playing for that next contract. Maybe you're playing to become a, uh, a like a guaranteed contract player. I understand that a little more, but it's still incredibly stupid because 
you know, even if you don't make it in the NBA, like, you could still be a relatively good player overseas or someplace like that, right? You could still be a good player playing overseas or be a good player, uh, you know, playing for, uh, I don't know, the NBL or, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different leagues around the world that you could play in. And when you bet on yourself to do the under, right, nobody's going to want to sign you because they think that you will literally gamble on yourself and play like shit and hurt the integrity of the game, hurt the team's chances to win. When it comes to penalty, man, I really feel like the NBA is going to come down hard on him. I, I feel like the NBA might even just ban him from the league because one thing the NBA has to do in this situation, and it sucks that Jonte Porter is going to have to be the example. I thought, you know, Calvin Ridley got suspended for an entire year when he did it in the NFL. Apparently, that wasn't long enough for Jonte Porter. Um, but, I, I, you know, this has the ability to ruin Jonte Porter's career, right? This is this is a move where the NBA could just ban you for life from the NBA and just say, yeah, you know what, you're not an important player anyway. You know, it would be different if he was like a LeBron James or a Kevin Durant or, um, you know, a Kobe Bryant, right? Somebody of that stature where it's like the league really can't ban you for life because of just what you would mean to the NBA, what you mean to to revenue and, and stuff like that, right? The, the problem is he's not that player. You know, he's not, you're not that guy, pal. You know, like that, that meme comes with you. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. You're not that guy, Jonte Porter. So, you know, it, it just, to me, I just think the, the NBA is going to crack down really hard on him. Do I think they're going to ban him from the league? Probably not. Like I, I have a feeling there's going to be a hefty suspension. Uh, I feel like there might even be a hefty fine, which if there is a fine, he better hope it's not his entire annual salary because when you are a two-way player, you know, 40 grand to a two-way player is a whole lot more than it is to James Harden, okay? I'm, I'm just going to let y'all know, okay? If you're a two-way player, you're playing for your, your lifeline in the NBA, whereas if you're somebody who's an established player, you got some bread in your pocket, Um I, I don't I don't like this, but you know what? The NBA is gonna have to crack down pretty hard on this. And honestly, determining punishment for it is is not exactly a walk down you know uh, easy street in itself. Um, you know, do you ban them for life from the NBA and and really set a precedent, or do you take into consideration that he's young and stupid and just made a stupid move? That's the problem with this whole thing. Is the idea it's like how do you punish this? Um, the NFL banned Calvin Ridley for a year. Maybe you banned. Jonte Porter for an entire year. Um, you know, maybe, I, I mean, honestly, I feel like that's, that's kind of a, I, I feel like that's a decent punishment for something like this only because he's a two way player. And it's like, uh, unfortunately doing something like this kind of ruins his career anyway, but at least you give him the opportunity to get back into the league at some point, given that he becomes a better player. And like, at least there's an avenue for it to come back to the league. But I just think when, when when you bet on the under, like it'd be one thing if he was like, okay, you know, on FanDuel, they have me scoring 10 and a half points this game and you bet the over like, yeah, I'm going to score more than that. But he wasn't doing that. He was like, oh, they got me to make, you know, 0 0.5 threes or one and a half threes a game. I'm going to purposely like play like shit so that doesn't happen so I can hit all my parlays, right? Most teams are not going to want a player like that on their team. Uh, so if you want my honest opinion, I feel like John Tay Porter's career is over. I, I, and, and that's like, I'm not trying to be hyperbolic by that, but most teams are not going to want to sign a guy, especially with the amount of people out there trying to get into the NBA. Like that's the other part of this is there's a lot of kids out there in high school, a lot of college players that would love the opportunity to be in the NBA. When you get to the NBA finally, and you do shit like this, you know, you, you bet against yourself and take the under and essentially sabotage the, the, um, integrity of the game and, and try to, you know, put money in your own pocket based on your play and, and do the under of all things. Like, I'm sorry. I, I just don't see what your path forward is going to be. I just don't, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's a, a touchy situation, but you know, I, I, he essentially ruined his own career. I, I just feel And on top of it, if the NBA bans you for a year, 
You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of college players out there that would like to get the opportunity he's gotten, and he's basically just throwing it away for what forty thousand dollars. I mean, it, it it just it's stupid. I don't understand why players get this opportunity to be in the league. They get the opportunity that many people want. You know, only one percent, less than one percent of of you know, males make it into professional sports, whether it's basketball, the NFL, or whatever, you get that opportunity, you know, you, you, you got all the right physicals, you know what I'm saying, you're six foot plus, and you know, 230, 240 pounds, right, you, you have all the athletic ability, you've been gifted with athletic ability, and you do some stupid shit like this, um, you know, I, I, I understand the, 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 ideology of betting on yourself but this is this ain't the way you're supposed to do it fam i'm just gonna let you know like this this ain't the way you're supposed to do that shit so tell me what you guys think about this down below in the comment section below i like helps me out subscribe if you guys want to see more i'm the fast break report and i'm out of this motherfucker peace guys